our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and so that uh, we were just in a class not too long ago here and that uh, and we're, where we're speaking to you from uh, Tareem and that the teacher was telling us that uh, there's a, uh, one of the sons of the great Habib Habib Muhammad bin Alawi bin Shihab who was the teacher of Habib Omar uh, one of the early great teachers of Habib Omar and he said to the students that if a true student of knowledge has 40 days passed and he hasn't seen the Prophet وسلم, that this isn't a student of knowledge. And he said, a student of knowledge that goes through the month of Rabi al-Awwal and doesn't see the Prophet وسلم, that this isn't a true student of knowledge. And that uh, we're not claiming that we have reached this level, but this is an ibrah, it's a lesson that we take, uh, that there's people out there who are constantly in this state of seeing the Messenger of Allah وسلم, on a regular basis. And that if we give this month its haq and its due, and we rejoice as we should, and we increase in sarawat on him, وسلم, and we celebrate his existence, and if one wills, they do things like the mawlid, and read his sirah, and so forth, that uh, this is something that, that will lead to seeing our Prophet, وسلم, which is something great, and we should all strive for, because the Prophet وسلم, said, Man ra'ani fil manami fusayrani yaqadah. This is in Sahih Bukhari, whoever sees me in a dream will see me in an awakened state and this is one of the greatest basharat of that and it's uh, one of the greatest meanings that we can think about when we're praying upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is is that there's a number of things that one can bring to heart that they're being covered in the prophetic light one can bring to heart that he's standing before them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one can bring to heart that he's in the rawdah or facing the muajah sharifa and that he's praying in this way uh, there's a number of different things we can mention uh, as well, uh, but the, uh, according to some of them, that the greatest thing that we can mention, that we can think of and nistahdir and bring to heart, is that when we're praying upon the Prophet وسلم, is that he returns our salam. And if one keeps and thinks about that, that he is returning the salam to you, one could imagine uh, what would happen to one if they saw him. Uh, let alone if he spoke to them, let alone if he uh, embraced them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something that we should long for and it should move our hearts. If our Prophet was uh, giving the khutbah on the minbar, uh, the old minbar which was a tree stump, and then he, when they replaced it with a new minbar that had three steps, it was made out of wood, that all of the companions heard it. They heard the moaning of the minbar because it longed for the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then what about the heart of a human being who is supposed to have a soft heart and has more capacity to attain those levels of intimacy and love and connection to the Prophet ﷺ than an inanimate object? And the Prophet said about this tree stump, he said, لو لم أدمه لهن إلى يوم القيامة Then why not to have embraced it that it would have remained moaning until the Day of Judgment? Uh, so uh, this is what brings us together is to talk about him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and because he is the door and the means for us to arrive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reason that Allah ta'ala commands us to pray upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is because it's for our own benefit the more love that we attain for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the more love that we attain for Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala the more love we attain for Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala the closer that we will eventually get to Allah and so it all stems from this and from that he is Sharifa his noble essence Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the book that we're going to be looking into, uh, I don't know how many sessions we'll have throughout this month, but we'll try to get through as much as we can, is a book titled Bidayat al-Sul fi Tafdeer al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Tasneem al kathira A book by uh, the great Imam Izzuddin ibn Abd al-Salam, and the title could be translated something like Initial Inquiries about the Messenger's Preeminence. And he'll mention in the introduction the story about behind the writing of this short treatise and I've been told that it's been translated by Aisha Buley I haven't seen it uh, but, I, but I'm told that there does, does exist a translation but before we actually get into the text we'll be reading the Arabic and translated and giving brief commentary we want to talk a little bit about uh, Imam Izzuddin ibn Abdul Salam uh, and he was a, a truly great scholar born in the year 557 and returned to the mercy of Allah in 660 that, that he was uh, born in, in Egypt and lived there quite some time and studied uh, many of the sciences locally 
with scholars and as well as traveled in, in seeking sacred knowledge. And that he was one of the great scholars that was distinguished from not only being uh, strong in the outward knowledges, but also being a man of deep piety and was known to be from the great awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a number of stories that they mention uh, that happened with him that prove his connection and relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of them, when he was very young, uh, that one time he was forced to make uh, ghusl three times in one night in the middle of the winter. And it was very painful for him to do this. And when he got up to make finish, it, finish the third ghusl, that he heard a hatif. A hatif is a sound that you hear without seeing uh, any what physical body speaking from. And it said, this voice said to him, he said that, Ya Ibn Abd al-Salam, O oh, Ibn Abd al-Salam, Aturid al-ilm aw al-amal, do you want knowledge or action? Mm. So he heard this voice, someone calling out to him. فقال الشيخ is the deen, al-ilm, لأنه يهدي للعمل. He said, I want knowledge because it guides one to doing righteous works. And so that they mentioned that the very next morning when he was studying the tanbih by uh, the uh, tanbih al shirazi that he started to study this and he memorized it in a very short period of time and he eventually became the greatest scholar of his time, the most knowledgeable scholar uh, of his time. And that uh, as well, he was also uh, the, those that performed the most ibadah of his time. He was truly a great scholar inwardly and outwardly. And there's another story that they mention uh, that shows his connection to the awliya of Allah. There was a sheikh by the name of Sheikh Sadr uh, There was a sheikh by the name of Sheikh Abdullah al-Biltaji, who lived in Narif, in the countryside outside of uh, Egypt, uh, Cairo, and that he used to give him presents on a regular basis. And so uh, one day the Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Biltaji, gave a number of presents to a messenger that was going to take this to Imam Izzadeen Abd al -Sanan. And so while this person was traveling, that one of the gifts was some cheese. Uh, the cheese fell and it got spoiled and got fell on the ground, so he had to get rid of it. And he didn't know what he was going to do, so while he was on the way, he found uh, he was distressed, and a woman saw him that was not a Muslim. Uh, she was from al uh, Dhamma, And um, she asked him, you know, what was wrong? And he told her what had happened, and that uh, she said, no, I have something that's even better than that. Cheese that's even better than that. So he purchased some cheese from her, and then went on his way till he finally reached Cairo. And then he came to the door of Imam Isidin Abdul Salam, entered into his presence, they took him upstairs, and he started to give him the gifts one by one, until he reached the cheese. Uh, when he gave him the cheese, uh, that he took it, and then he gave it back. He said, leave that at the door. And he said that, uh, he said that uh, 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 the person, the messenger said that no one knew what had happened, except this lady in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he said that uh, he had realized that this was through his kashf and his unveiling. He said that the, the, the lady that was making that cheese, that her hand was mutanajisa, it had nejis on it from khanzia, from a pig. And so it had pig filth on it. Pig, pig filth on it. And so he, he, he had perceived that, and he told him to leave the cheese uh, by the door. Uh, he was also uh, known to uh, uh, be an extremely generous person, and to the extent that there was times where poor people would ask him for things and he wouldn't have anything except the clothes that he was wearing and he would cut pieces of his imama to give to the poor and uh, there was also a time when the prices dropped greatly and that the farms and the gardens started to be sold for very cheap prices and his wife gave him some gold that she wanted to sell and then to buy one of these gardens or one of these farms and so that he realized that there were some people in need, so he took his wife's money that was supposed to go towards his farm, and he went <coughs> and he distributed it to the poor. And then when he came back to her, she said, that, did, you, you know, did you buy a bustan, a garden? And he said that I bought you a garden in paradise. Uh -huh. And we could all imagine what would happen in our own lives if, if we went back, and you know, even if it was something much smaller than that, uh, that uh, if we came back and our uh, families, and it goes both ways for men and women, sent us out to buy something, we came back and we told him that we gave the money away. We could all imagine the reaction. Uh, but what was her response? She said, Jazakallahu khayra. May Allah reward you. That she was a righteous woman as well, that she realized that this is what truly remains. Like the story of the Prophet when they slaughtered a goat and they passed it out. 
And the Sayyid Aisha said that Ya Rasulullah, the only thing that remains is the dira, is the shoulder or the arm. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, No Aisha, that everything remains except the dira. Meaning that everything that you gave out in reality, that's what remains with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And one will receive the reward of that. And the only thing that didn't really remain was what they were going to eat themselves. Uh, that, another story that they mentioned was that um, uh, that uh, uh, he, he had taken the Sufi path from Imam Shahabuddin al Safarawardi, and he was one time reading the Risalat al Kushairiya in his presence, and that Imam Abu Hassan al Shafi'i came, and they were speaking about their understandings of the book, and then it was Imam Abu Hassan al Shafi'i's turn to speak, and he spoke yani, the most beautiful and eloquent words. Words that no one else had spoken. Uh, the, the words that other people had spoken were memorized. Whereas these words were things that they hadn't heard before. And he saw. He went into a state. And he said that, he, and he said that, that, هَذَا الْكَلَامَ الَّذِي وَحَدِيثُ أَحْدٍ بِرَبِّهِ That these are words that are fresh from the presence of their Lord. Indicating by that statement that these were عُلُومَ الْدُنِيَا These were knowledges that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up to his heart in that moment. These are knowledges that Allah Ta'ala gives to His beloved servants. Uh, one time Imam Junaid uh, was uh, in the presence of a, a group of scholars studying the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu And this scholar uh, had heard Imam Junaid's commentary. And he said two meanings that he had never heard before. He went back to his books, he went back to his notes, and he, he couldn't find these mentioned anywhere. And so he came back to Imam Junaid and he said, what were those two things that you had mentioned? He said, I'd never heard those before, and I want to make sure that I wrote those down. And Imam Junaid then told him three other meanings of that same hadith, other than those previous two. And he said to him that I'm unable to recall what those other two were, meaning that my knowledge is, is always fresh and new. These new meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to my heart, uh, that uh, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that they also mention a story that uh, one time there was an opposing army that reached the shores of Egypt. Uh, that were coming to uh, cause problems and that uh, when this reached uh, Imam Isadin ibn Abi Salam that uh, he said Nada bi a'la sawtihi he called out in the loudest voice that he could Mushirin bi yadihi ila rih pointing to the wind and then he spoke to the wind and said Ya rihu khudihim that he said this many times that yeah, and he spoke to the wind and he said take them, take them, take them and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made a very powerful wind swing through and many of these ships sunk and these people returned and, and weren't harmed. So this is again one of his karamat radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa nafa'na bihi fi ameen May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us through him. He wrote a number of beautiful books uh, from among them are the books that were the, the book that we're going to be studying. He also wrote Al-Qawaid al-Kubra, Shajarat al-Ma'arif a abridgment of Sahih Muslim and uh, a number of others uh, and uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, he also did a muqtasar al-ri'aya al muhasabi and so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless us through him insha'Allah ta'ala and to uh, open our hearts to uh, the meanings that are going to uh, be insert, inserted in them insha'Allah and so he passed away in the year 660 and he's buried in Qarafa uh, in, in Cairo, uh, which is the same graveyard that uh, Imam, Sha Imam Shafi'i is also buried in, along with a long list of some of the greatest of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.